Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part 5 of the Sony KB1942R. So far we have gone through the power supply board, the uh, deflection driver board, the horizontal output board, and today we're going to focus on pulling and yanking the uh, video board here, color processor, and if there's time the IF board. Not a lot of recapping to do. Uh, there probably is going to be some need for resoldering and then we'll fire it back up and see uh, what changes we can procure. So let's go ahead and get to it and uh, let's pull the board out. Alright, so I made a small map here so I'm just going to go ahead and start unplugging stuff. All the boards, this one's probably the easiest to get out, I assume. Like I said, that's an assumption that we'll soon discover whether it has some truth or not. Meanwhile, I'm going to shake the crap out of the camera so everybody gets dizzy. Might have to use a stubber for that. All right, so that board's out. Let's move the set aside and take a look at it. All right, so here's our chroma processing board. You've got your drive controls there. Presets for hue and centering. You've got your connector for all your front panel controls there. Pretty clean looking board. There's your color crystal up there. Your ACC automatic color control. There's your voltage in. 18 volts, 12 volts. There's your sync. Video input information. So, this should be fairly straightforward. Just taking a look at this board up close, it does need some resoldering. Though, because it doesn't run as hot as the uh, other boards, it's probably not as badly as baked. But let's go ahead and make a map of the uh, caps and the values change them out. For the most part soldering on this board looks really good so I think I'm just going to resolder the key points that look bad crystallized etc and then we'll pop this back in and uh, then we'll go for the IF board. Again my uh, goal with this thing is to get it as reliable as possible. So let me get a uh, piece of paper here and we'll just be keep using the one that we have been using use the other side of it and so again I just make a map and we've got two caps here I look to see where the negative leads are. Mark them. Got another one down here. And if you get fused, you can always put a reference marker for a nearby component to help keep track of things. There's one there.
Again, I do this because it makes it easier for me to speed through the recap process. Okay, and we'll see what these guys' values are. That's going to be a 10. That's going to be a 1 at 50. Another 10. 47. 35. Another 150. This one's a 2.2. This one's a 100. This one's another 10. That one's a 33. Another one, another one, and finally, another one. Make sure I didn't miss any. Looks good. And yeah, we'll make a list here. Almost forgot the single 2.2. .2. Okay, so I got those noted, and we'll get on the other side and mark the locations on the board so that we know where they're at. Makes uh, desoldering very easy because although they are marked on the board, it is easier to do it this way. Again, for me, your mileage may vary. And it's probably true that the majority of these old caps are still hanging in there. And as we saw, it does produce a very nice picture as is. But I am planning to use this for the long haul, so I'm going to recap it for the purposes of my enjoyment. I don't intend to get rid of this thing. It's so hard to find a nice Trinitron around here. Most of them are just kind of beat up and trashed. So when you see a nice one, I have a greater urge to fix it. Let's see here. Yeah, indirect lighting is going to be better for this. Yeah, let's go ahead and see if I can provide a better Okay, so I think this is going to do it for the position that I want this to be in. And we're going to go ahead and pull out our magic wick and start removing parts. I'm just waiting for the flood of phone calls to come in two hours before the store is supposed to open. Because we open late on the uh, weekends so that I have time to work on projects on the side or catch up on paperwork. So 
surprisingly, uh, I get a lot of people that come to the store as a function of watching bids here. Not what I originally intended it for, but it's nice that it's kind of free advertising. Paid advertising. I guess it's paid advertising. Monetization and such. Which doesn't pay squat, but I'm not going to get into that. I think this one's going to be a, a much quicker board service than the last ones. Just because there's so much less to do here. Should be the last one. Okay. Let's go ahead and just start taking them out. down here I missed. Okay, so everybody's out. Got our nice little pile of parts there. So let me go yank the inventory I need and then we'll start repopulating it. Alright, so let's start repopulating the board. We've got a tin. It goes here. Another ten, it goes here. A one that goes next to it. Forty-seven goes here. And again, I'm spraying the leads out to the sides there to help them stay in. Yeah, let's see, 135 goes up top here. Fifty goes over here. Let's see. Make sure that's the right one. The two point two should go there. And beneath that, the ten should go there. Okay. Yeah, two point two goes there. Again, bending the leads over so that uh, things easily get stay in there. And let's see, here's another one microfarad. And we got more one microfarads. And 
another one microfarad. And this goes where? Up at the top. Okay, and then just what's left is the uh, 33 microfarad. Okie dokie. Let's see if I can get a little bit brighter light on this. And let's start soldering them in. Okay, and we'll clip all the extra lead. Set these aside. I actually save pieces of lead that I clip off of components. I find it useful when jumpering broken traces on boards or uh, using it to reinforce plastics that are starting to crack or fail. There's all sorts of stuff you can use them for. Just depends on how creative you want to get. Come on. California barking spiders. Okay, well, we forgot one little lead here. Alright, so that's looking pretty good there. And it looks like the majority of the uh, pore connections are centered around the edges of the ICs. That's pretty common. And then these big connectors along the side here. There is a couple that could use some help. Uh, let me see if I can shed a little more light on it. It might be glary, but I can at least see it a little bit better. And we'll work on doing some of these resolder jobs here.
reason why I'm alternating sides and going to different sections of the chip is so that I don't concentrate heat at one spot of the chip for too long. You can hurt it that way. And the last thing I want to do is have to find one of those uh, Sony CX style ICs. Not easy to get these days. And after we're done with this board, we'll yank the IF board. Which is probably going to take a little bit longer. There's one pin I missed there. This one could be a little better too. Definitely going to scrape between the leads of these. Make sure I didn't create any little solder bridges. That would be a bad thing. Now I'm doing it from a different angle because I find that if I look at how the light hits the solder at different angles, you can oftentimes reveal things that you missed. Connections that looked okay from above or another angle, but actually show signs of wear from another angle. Clear as mud. Okay.
the more I look at it, the more I see wrong. And I keep finding more connections that need to be done. I guess that's good. The fewer times I have to yank this board back out, the better. Never been a fan of Sony wave soldering. You look at other components from the same time frame, like uh, we see a lot of these Sony STR 7065, 6065, mid fi receivers from the mid to late 70s. They too also have soldering that looks okay nominally, but it's not. And you could tap on the board, and the machine will do all sorts of bizarre stuff. A little red, the red thing's the delay line. I don't want to get that too hot because I'm worried about the little wires breaking inside. That's looking much better now. So you just do it one final pass here. Okay. And let me come over here and look at it from this angle. Mm. Oh, sorry about that. This one over here needs work. Couldn't really see it until I came over top here to the other side. Okay, that's better. I'm going to go ahead and scrape between the leads. Make sure there's no solder bridges I've created as a function of resoldering this IC. I just use the back side of the X-Acto, not the sharp side. And try to clear any probable solder bridges I've made. That could use a touch up too. I think by the time everything is said and done, maybe I will have resoldered the board. I've got to stop bumping this thing.
All right. Okay. Just scrape through this. There's a lamp attached to the same boom that my camera is on, so that's what that was. I could use a touch of that number one pin there. Again, that's reducing the probability that I've created a solder bridge. And so if it were to catch on something, and of course you look closer and you'd see what was there and remedy it. Otherwise, I think this board's good to go. So let's go ahead and uh, pop it back in the set and uh, see what our color looks like. Okay. Kind of finagle it into the track here. There we go. Let's get our two screws. One that holds it up here. And then there's another one down here. Can't use that stubby one there because of that connector and board in the way so we're going to use a long shaft to get this back in assuming it's going to cooperate it's thinking about it if my hands will cooperate that would be helpful all right That gets plugged in. That gets plugged in. Okay. Yeah, everything's in there. Let's uh, fire it up. There's that pretty picture. Is it squirt? No. Just don't get too attached to it. I've got to get it back to the hospital. Yeah, the picture is bright, and so the camera's blanking a bit. Let's see if we can reduce that somewhat. Uh, listen, uh, Louise, there's something I forgot to do this weekend. What? Man, that looks nice. Um, Okay, well now that that's happier, let's go ahead and uh, yank the IF board and go over that real quick. So far, so good. Okay, well there's our IF board. Let's see, this is A2, which is marked there. A7, I'm going to make a note here because they have some stuff crowded in, I'm just going to put a number 7 on top of that coil there, and an identical mark there, since there are two connectors that are the same, and yep, that one's marked, we're just going to put one on here anyways. This is 
a one. say A3. And let's just make a little mark with A3 goes here. And then there's our input from the tuner. And then there's this guy here, which I believe goes back to the power supply board on the other side. Double check that real quick. That actually went to the picture IF board that we just put back in. So two screws to come out here. out. Let's take a quick look at it. Alright, so here's the IF board. This is normally how it sits in the TV. There's your audio section there. This is your picture section. There's a couple of electrolytics here, but not a whole lot. Uh, let's just see if we can pull up the shield a little bit. Take a look inside. And we've got a couple electrolytics hiding in here that we need to uh, take care of. And on your AFT circuit, there usually isn't capacitors inside here. Nope, this is just a chip. We'll go ahead and map this and then uh, swap the caps out. Let's take a look at the solder side. Now this could be tricky because we are going to have to desolder the shield in order to get to those caps inside the uh, IF shield. And depending on how much time we have, we might actually have to do this board on a separate video. But so far, it looks pretty straightforward. The soldering on this is uh, okay, not great. But uh, let's make a map. And uh, let's go from there. Okay, I can't really fit both on the same screen, so there's my little crude capacitor map there. And. Let me take down some values. Okay, so I got all my values written down here and the proper orientation. So now what I'm going to do is flip this over and start marking caps as I can go. And we'll pull these guys out. See, I'm going to have to take the shield off to get the, the other ones here. For that, we're going to need a soldering gun. Yeah, because there's uh, four inside of here. And as you can see, there's a nice happy shield in the way. There's one of them I can see on the bottom of the board there. So let's get the soldering gun and see if we can get the shield up without breaking anything. Alright, so I'm warming up the soldering gun. 
And basically what we're going to do is go around the perimeter of this thing and desolder the tabs holding it to the board so we can get it up. Mark the remaining caps and then we can replace them all. Takes a while for things to heat up. Usually know when the tip starts smoking, the rosin leftovers starting to bubble, so we're getting there. There we go, tip smoking. If you can see that. That's we're ready to go. And the suck thing about doing this is that the cover is eventually going to get hot. So I'm just concentrating, sucking stuff up off the board as much as possible. It may be that I have to do a little prying, but I don't want to damage the board if I can manage it. That's the last thing I want is more work. Come over here and do this one. The attachment of this to the board is kind of sloppy. I mean, it was probably just last minute assembly, hey, we're done with this board, let's put a shield on it, kind of thing. But so long as it makes a good connection to ground, that's all that matters. Yep, cover's starting to heat up real good. Might have to wait for it to cool down. And at worst, we'll have to pry a tiny little bit as we apply heat until the solder lets go. Like I said, I just don't want to risk damaging the board. Felt that one break loose. Okay, should be just about ready to start trying to pull up on this thing. Gotta trim off the excess, otherwise it hangs up on stuff. Let me just go around the edge here again. Let's try prying this up real gently. Don't want to budge, so we'll apply a little heat as we pry. Yep, there we go. Apply a little heat as we pry. And then again, maybe I can just, yep, that one's just going to come up nice and easy.
Come on now. Okay, shields off. A little bit of effort there. And now we can finish marking the rest of the caps. And let's see, we've got this one here. This one over here. This one over here. This fat one here. And then this guy down here, I think. Yep. All right. Sounds like the male guy's here. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and start removing caps. More boring work. But at least you guys are seeing it how you have to actually do it. No shortcuts on this. We're definitely going to be thorough about the soldering before we put the shield back on. Okie dokie. Go ahead and start yanking parts out. Guess I missed the ones down here. Yeah, they're not quite desoldered. That one's still hanging on a little bit. You get these areas where it's too tight for my fat little fingers to grab. So that's what the hemostats are for. Okay. 
And we got this one here. It's to microfarad. Yep, I didn't mark that one. I mean, it's on the map, but I didn't mark it for desoldering. C226. Okay, this guy right here, another 10 microfarad, he's still kind of hanging on there, just enough solder that it didn't want to come out. Okay, now we're depopulated. Let's go ahead and get our grip of caps and shove them in here. Okay, so we got our fresh caps. Let's go ahead and start repopulating this board. Let's see. The first thing I picked up is a 33, which is going to go here. Here's a 22, which goes on the other side of the board. More California barking spiders. Here's a 1. That's going to go up here. Point four seven, which is going to go just below it. Did I miss something? Perhaps I did. That's the point four seven that I'm supposed to replace. Ah, yes. I didn't get yanked out fully. Let's just verify that. Yep, point four seven. You go there. Okay, we got a 2.2, which goes in here, let's bend the leads up, another one at 50, you're going to go here, Let's see, here's a 10. More 10s. The remain, remainder are really 10s. Let me just bend that over. Okie dokie. Hmm. Let's make sure I got this all in the right spot. Tens. Thirty-three. I guess there is. Oh yeah, there's the extra thirty-three. Okay. Yeah, there's the other thirty-three. All right. Go ahead and solder these guys up.
haven't installed a 470 yet. I think there's another one down there that I missed. Let's see now. Which one did I miss? It's down here. Oh, it's another 10 at 50. Okay, so we got the 33 here, 10 here, one there, 2.2 there, another 10 there, 33 there, 22 there, 0.47 there, another one there, two 10s there. So, yep, it's just another 10 and another uh, 470. <laughs> there's the 470 and there's the 10 Okie dokie. All the electrolytics are in. This luscious, exciting world of recapping. You ain't lived unless you spent your life replacing parts. But hey, if you guys like watching me do this, that's cool. I myself find it very mundane. I'd much rather be troubleshooting a circuit or something. Keeps your mind going. The thing about audio is, is that, uh, more people use old audio gear than old televisions. And as they age, the old audio gear develops bizarre new failures that you haven't seen before. Whereas I don't see a lot of old TVs. Maybe one or two a month someone will come to me with one that they want fixed. But, because of all the other work I have, it's not easy to turn them around quickly. And then there's always a question of monetary value, which, if you look at it from the standpoint of monetary value, these old sets are only worth what people that are looking for them are willing to pay. Like, I'm sure I could sell this and slap Shango's uh, trademark gamer's choice on it and it would sell really well and I get you know a couple hundred bucks for it considering it's recapped and in nice shape but the time that we're putting into this is not worth well it's worth far more than the money that I'd be able to ask for it so that and I just want to keep it whereas the audio gear seems to keep going up in price I've noticed that and the Moran stuff goes for stupid money. In my personal opinion, having worked on Moran's for two decades, is that uh, it looks pretty. But I don't really care much for the, the sound, especially considering the cost that you have to invest in order to own some real Moran's gear. And I'm not talking about just like a 22 series, like a 2270 or something. I'm talking about real Saul Moran stuff from back in the 50s and 60s when it was made in the states those are the ones that go for bank money and yeah it's nice gear it's nicely assembled it's well put together it's repairable absolutely but I'm just not a fan it's just the way it sounds is good but it isn't 
thousands of dollars good. And the uh, the 22 series seems to be, with the exception of a few models, somewhat unreliable. I probably get a Maranson for repair every week. 2270, 2238, 2265, you know, stuff like that. About the only ones that I don't see very often are the 2230 and the 2245. Those I hardly ever see. Oh look, it's still an hour before we open and the phone calls are coming. Yeah, that just is a continual source of annoyance for me. They had to have found our phone number on the internet, usually uh, right next to our business hours. So, yeah, not sure why he's calling. And then he'll find out that he can't leave a message. Yeah, he can't leave messages, so... And after we are open, there is a an outgoing recorded message that says, uh, we accept phone calls between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. during the week, and if we don't pick up, it's because we're with the customer or on the other line, or we're just simply busy. And then you'll get the people that will just try to hammer your phone line, like keep trying every 30 seconds. It's like they're needy. And I try to, if I do pick up, I'll be like, hey, I'm with a customer, can I have you call back in 15 minutes or can I call you back and then they get like really upset with you because you can't wait on that second very impatient the uh, the vintage electronic repair brings out a lot of crazies machines that will have been broken for months now all of a sudden have to be completed last week or the person that gets upset because their equipment isn't repaired in time for a social gathering that they have in which music is to be played through their particular device so they can show it off you get a lot of angry people with that and then there's the people that come in with a complaint that far differs from what we actually observe and then they get nuts when you tell them you can't find their problem but you found this problem like yesterday, I had a dude come into the store that had an old Phillips turntable that I serviced back in December. And the guy was complaining that one side wasn't working. He wasn't getting stereo, it was only coming out of the left side. So I plugged it into uh, the receiver at the counter I have. And it worked perfectly. And I tried wiggling the cables and tapping on the head shell and messing with the connections to the cartridge and stuff like that to try to get it to mess up. And I could not. I could not. And he, he, he heard it. I see it's playing through both sides. What I did notice was that on the 312, 212, there's a, a cueing rocker that you have to press down in order to get the arm to drop on the record. And this machine would not stay down on the record. The cueing lever would pop up and the arm would come up off the record and it wouldn't play. And I told him about that. I said, hey, it's doing this, it's doing that. And he saw it. And then he immediately turns to me and says, well, I wasn't doing that when I brought it in. You must have done something to it. And I said, well, all I did was hook it up at the counter. You I mean, you saw me do it. It wasn't like I, I opened it and fiddled with something or pounded on it or anything like that. And he's, I told him, you know, I can't find your problem with the channel being out, but here's what I did find. And then he kept getting more and more irate and just like really upset that I hadn't confirmed his problem, but I found this other one. And then when I tried to offer to, you know, fix the, the problem with it not playing consistently without holding down the button, he, like, lost it. And he started shouting at the doorway, and he was making a big fuss. I mean, he was getting, like, really angry, like he was about to pick shit up and throw things at me angry. And so I called the cops. And uh, the cops showed up and took care of the situation, and it, I just, like, was standing there going, Wow. I had to file a police report for a customer that couldn't take the fact that I hadn't found his problem that he had talked about. And you just, you see that sort of thing in this field, and it really is just bizarro. And I don't understand it. 
anyway, weird segue anecdotal type thing for you. Okay. So just about all the soldering here is done. Then we can put the shield back on before I forget. And then we'll finish resoldering the rest of this thing. My other favorite are the ones that authorize a repair. They actually pay money down. They authorize it, and, you know, like halfway through, they're like, oh, stop. I'm like, really? You said it was okay, and you gave me money. Well, I want that money back. Well, I just dumped two hours into the machine, so I'm, no, I'm not going to give you your money back. You told me you wanted it fixed. I attempted to fix it, and then you say stop halfway through. Get some of those, too. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if people would just make up their minds completely but that's why I take money up front to get paid for my time alright enough rambling let's see now That's not how that goes. Of course, that's not how that goes either. Nope, yeah, it is. Okie dokie. You gotta make sure to get the cage on there proper. Otherwise you could actually short things out. They've got a little outline on the board here where they want you to center it. Okie dokie. Let's lay down some solder. Yeah, I thought for some reason that this was going to be the type where I had to pull it off the board, but in fact, these things on the board were for the shield above. So now I just got to solder to these things. Makes it a lot easier. And I'm going to run out of camera storage again. So we'll probably have to wait till the next video to install this. Maybe. We'll see. I'd like to get it all in one shot, but I can only do about an hour and 15 minutes worth of footage before the uh, camera fills up. It's old. See, this side doesn't want to cooperate as much. More barking spiders. I'm like a methane co-generator today for San Diego Gas and Electric. Okay. Shield's back on there. I'm going to go ahead and just pop the top one on. Okay. And we'll work on doing the rest of the resoldering and stuff in here. Okay.
yeah we've got about three, three or four minutes left before we have to bail on the camera More people that want to call in before we're open. My stomach is not happy today. Okay. Hmm. There was a tone control available? That's interesting. Okie dokie. So this thing looks pretty good. I've got about a minute and a half left. So in the next episode, we'll pop this IF board back in. And we'll uh, see what's left to do. I'll probably end up re-soldering the neck board check the tuner and control board I don't have the remote control but maybe I will in the future another person I just love it it's good 20 to 30 minutes before we open okay alright so that board's looking pretty good anyways I just love that it just yeah you're not uh, whatever let's do those two okay well anyways this is gonna wrap it up for uh, part five and we'll slap this board in next time and uh, hook it all up and see what she looks like so in the meantime thanks for watching the video more stuff to come.